Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video I want to talk about how to control major bleeding. Now I've done a few videos on this um, about bandaging, also even how to use the commercial device, the cat tourniquet. Uh, it's been a while back but I did do a video on that. And honestly it's one of our most popular videos is this cat tourniquet. And this works outstanding, works great if you can use this with it being a commercial device. But what if you don't have one of these? Well that's what I want to talk to you about in this video is how to create a tourniquet without using a commercial device. Now, using a tourniquet is dangerous, okay? It's life-threatening and your patient or yourself may lose your extremity, okay? So you have to know that going in. So when you go to apply a tourniquet, it's not for oozing blood, minor bleeding. This is for life-threatening. You have bright red blood squirting, okay? It's bleeding that you cannot get controlled and you think if you can't get it controlled, you may die or your patient may die. So we're going to go through on how to tie a tourniquet and how to stop major life-threatening bleeding. This is an example of the cat tourniquet here. Like I said it's a commercial device, relatively inexpensive. I think you can pick these up for about $20. I have several of them I keep in my pouches and my bags. And it works great for a commercial device to control bleeding, life-threatening, um, arterial bleeding. So this video we're going to talk about what if we don't have one of these what if we're just down to what we have in our bug out bag our everyday carry bag that's what we're going to talk about first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some material you want to make it wide so you can create as much surface area across the extremity as possible you don't want it to be real thin and actually try to cut you want it really wide two to three inches so you can get as much surface area on the skin as possible as much surface contact Second thing you're going to need is you're going to need a way to tighten up the material once you tie your knot, uh, the way to wind it to make it tighter. This will not work. Okay, A number two pencil is not strong enough as much pressure as you're going to have to put on this to stop the bleeding. This will not work. So throw it away. You're going to need something hard. This metal screwdriver would work great. Something that's not going to bend, that's not going to break. That once we tie our knot and start to turn put pressure on the extremity onto the tourniquet that it's not going to bend or break. Just as ease for an example I'm going to put this on my lower extremity. You want to tie the tourniquet as close to the wound as possible okay just maybe an inch or two closer to the body so if my injury is here squirting bright red blood and maybe I've uh, partially amputated my lower leg and I need to stop the bleeding then if the injury is here I want to tie my tourniquet just about here. Take your material, get it a couple inches wide, and tie just a simple overhand knot. Take your Windsor, whatever device you're going to use to help turn, and tie another knot. Okay. Now, this we can start winding. And you can see it gets tighter and tighter. And eventually you will cut off bleeding, hopefully, with this. You may have to do a second one just above it, but you should be able to cut off bleeding. Now you also will lose a distal pulse, and that's okay. That's normal, okay? Once you tie this, then you're going to want to secure it into place. Now I showed you how to do it on a lower extremity, but you can also do it on an arm or upper leg. It's, of course, it's got to be an extremity, but you can control major bleeding this way. Now on a side note, if your patient has lost that much bleeding that you're trying to treat, they're going to be in shock. So there's a couple of things we can do to help treat for shock. One is we can elevate their feet. Elevate their feet about 6 to 12 inches with them laying flat on the ground. This is called trending Ellenberg position, okay? You can have them lay flat with their feet elevated above their chest, about 6 to 12 inches. Also cover them with a blanket, keep warm, okay? Heat loss is going to be a problem here because their body's in shock. It's drawing in their blood from the extremities to the core to try to keep it alive. So heat loss is going to be a problem. So if we can keep them warm, 
you can help them from going into irreversible shock. I hope this video helps. You never know when you're going to be the first responder.